where if he plays at the top of his game, he's going to World Finals one way or the other, and that's got to feel really good. Arden, Toa's SK Morton championship game. Let's see who's going to win. If Morton wins this set, it will move on to a second one, but Arden going to do his best to not allow that to happen. And that's a very important point there, Josh. The double elimination we're playing this weekend. The bracket reset is possible. Arden only needs one best of three win. Morton needs two because Arden has not lost yet. We'll see if Morton can get that started here, and that is minor loon to the right hand side and morton neither building in hand gonna have to eat nope nato's to his king tower okay yeah i wasn't sure just off the bat if he was gonna have nato or fireball in the deck just gonna be running nato and so a decent bit of damage from arden but nothing too scary just yet Morton's last card should be Firecracker. I mean, it, it, it should, you, you should be trying to use Firecracker every set. So I, I, I like this deck choice from Morton. And then Arden Toa's never really a fan of Balloon, but, uh, but maybe he can do some work that others couldn't. And there we go. Finally getting the Firecracker in for some chip damage on the tower. And Morton is most likely to give up a little King Tower activation here as the Musketeer goes and pulls to the middle and you saw him not really playing it early finally getting it down and you'd always love to get at least one if not two firecracker cycles before a king tower activation if possible josh yeah that's right you never i mean it, it's never the end of the world but especially when you're running a deck like Morton's, we saw it in the game against Faust. Faust was able to activate the King Tower right away with even the drill. So e even though it's really rough on him, it's not the end of the world. We kind of expect uh, the King Tower to get activated pretty much immediately. And the Monk doing some reflection onto the Bomb wow. Tower, that's gonna put some hurt in that defense against the Balloon. And Morton does not have to spend his Tornado as the Loon does go down, but the pressure from Arden here is relentless. Yeah, this is an exciting push from uh, Arden Toa's right here. Arrow's coming down, but they're not going to take it completely out. Tower down to 1432, and I think the balloon will get a drop damage. We're just going to have to wait and see, and it does not. So great defense from Morton. I thought for sure that he was going to be in an insurmountable spot, but instead defense quite nicely. And Arden certainly not happy with the amount of damage done onto that Musketeer. About a thousand HP separating these two. Morton continue to try to find a way on the left hand side. We know how explosive, pun intended, the Firecracker can be on that left hand lane or in any situation once she gets the Evo form. We'll see if Morton can find purchase. For now, though, he has to contend with this Monk Mortar combination. Monk's reflection earlier was fantastic. Monk this time not really trying to go for the reflection, just trying to get a little bit of baby damage, and that's what we're going to see. Have to look at the God, or the drill, and he finally defends it right there. 1186 to 2066, and this is what you need to do when you're running Loon Miner. Sometimes the Miner ends up being the win condition. Sometimes you have to have the Balloon tank for the Miner in order for you to get the correct amount of damage. And the Monk reflecting the Firecracker off of the tower so preventing a ton of damage and getting her off the board very nicely played with the monk still drill damage will be significant bomb tower comes down musketeer keeps it off of that mortar on the right hand side yeah protecting the mortar right there arrows are going to come ooh, down and he has ooh. nothing in cycle this should be game i don't know how morton is going to be able to defend it nato pulls everything back here arrows takes the firecracker off morton is not back to a building gg well played arden toas takes game number one i mean that was just constant pressure right there the mortars were always getting a ton of value and you have firecracker uh, ice spirit guards all of them can get taken off the board from the arrows and so with the constant pressure it Hey, I mean, you have Bomb Tower and NATO, so you should always be able to defend those balloons. But there was something about the way he was setting up those pushes where Morton couldn't really hold the correct cards for the correct cycle. On to game number two, and looking like we might be getting into some graveyard action on both sides once again. Those zappies going to give some pause to Morton as he drops his Inferno Dragon. Skeleton King activating its ability early on. Arrows are going to come down, but the Skeleton King is still going to make it to the tower if Morton doesn't defend. Getting one shot, not a second. 
but uh, still one shot. And it looks like Morton is running lava. Fireball coming down immediately. Does he have Barbaro and Cycle? This could be the tower. I mean, almost all the way down. Who? We'll have to see. RG getting a lot done, and that Barbarian just hanging out. Morton just having to eat that damage and figure out what's coming up next. Arden Toas has won the All-Stars in 2022, came in first at ESL's Snapdragon Pro Series for North America last year. Queso Cup, second place last year, but has not won a CRL monthly final and now is just a few seconds away from making that happen. I mean, going in with the prediction fireball, you know your opponent, I, he instantly recognizes the deck that he's supposed to be going against. But here's the thing, technically, it, I mean, it might not matter. He has the arrows, he has the zap, he can take off these zappies. So we're just gonna have to see, we need the elixir right here. Still a little ways away from the zap coming down and instead, perfect defense from Arden Loon almost gets there, but not quite. And Arden Toas running away with it now. That 207 on the left-hand side in perfect fireball range. So Arden knows he has that tower and has it secured. Now it just needs to play defense on this right-hand side. A little surprised by the barb barrel on that left-hand lane. Maybe just knowing that Morton doesn't want to spend for it. But that's not going to get the tower down. That seems like a wasted two elixir here, Josh. That's right. But you can kind of get away with that because... I, I mean, it, it's just kind of weird. You need to take out that tower so you can start to get aggressive. So I, I get it. It feels like a waste, but really, you're just trying to set yourself up to be able to go RG in the pocket. Barb's the left-hand side, full Lava Loon push to the right-hand lane. Not quite to five Elixir yet. Needs that for the arrow zap, does Morton. Now he has it, arrow zap come wow. in, but Zappies are right behind it. Inferno Dragon trying to get tanked for, if it can. Loon does get one drop, but those Zappies down low mean GG, well played. Arden Toas going to be your July monthly champion, your golden ticket winner, and now back-to-back -back trips to Clash Royale League World Finals. He has to feel so good. It's not because of matchups. It's not because of anything else. It's because of his own gameplay. Game two, everything on the line. Oh, you know, I'm going to play nervous. That's what most people are thinking. Not Arden. He wants to win the game right away, and he wins it based off of, I mean, based off of his true play style, getting aggressive. Your opponent only has barbs and cycle. I'm going to go prediction fireball at the bridge, and it wins him the game, and it wins him the golden ticket. And this is a big validation for Arden Toas, who was certainly one of the, maybe the odd man out at World Finals last year, lesser, a lesser known quantity, kind of a quieter player, and now going to World Finals two years in a row, and not just going two years in a 